All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of the Kerbal Crash System, which is being made by forum user Enzo Mirtens, and what this absolutely glorious piece of work looks to add into the game is a complete rewriting of the Kerbal Space Program Collision System. And I cannot tell you how amazed I am by this mod. And also happy, as one of the things that always has been kind of weird to me, though at the same time highly amusing and entertaining, is that even the slightest small accident with one of your crafts in this game leads to a chain reaction of explosions. Now, of course, that does lead to hilarious good times, but it's always kind of bothered me where if you even brush a solar panel at one meter per second, it goes kaboom. But now, that doesn't have to be the case. The Kerbal Crash System, as I said, rewrites the collision system so that now instead of just exploding, the various parts of your craft will take damage. Now, of course, if they take too much damage at once or take multiple bits of damage over time, they will still explode. But until they do, they actually will have visual damage effects in the form of crumple zones, essentially, and the damaged parts will have mal effects on your ship, and I simply love that idea. So let's go to the launch pad where I have built a uh, crash test little ship here, and let's go to launch that. Now, right at this moment, there really are only three things that properly get damaged. Now, everything in the game will crumple, but at the moment, only fuel tanks, ore tanks, etc., containers of that variety, will take proper damage, capsules will also take proper damage, and engines will. Now everything else, such as a stack decoupler, will still crumple if it gets damaged, but it's not fully integrated in with the Kerbal Crash system, whereas the engine here, we actually have this damage percentage that'll show, and that will tell you how badly hurt your engine is, and of course you will also get visual indicators. But things like uh, solar panels, those don't have that damage number. Uh, the decoupler, again, doesn't have that damage number, and a variety of other parts. For right now, only containers, capsules, and engines are fully integrated. Now with that out of the way, let us drop all three of these and then we'll have a look at what the actual damage is. So let's drop the fuel tank, the engine, and the capsule. Ah, uh, there we go. And start with the engine, or not the engine, the fuel tank rather, and you can see it's gotten quite a bit of crumpling going on here as it has taken a fair amount of damage. If we right click, you'll see it has taken 57.95% damage. And you may have also noticed something else. The liquid fuel and oxidizer are going down. Yes, folks, this container is leaking. Now, however much you damage your craft will determine how much it leaks, so the more damaged it is, the faster it will leak, and of course the less damage it's taken, the slower it will leak, but overall it's still gonna leak, which is a very, very bad thing for your craft, because even if you get like 10% damage, it'll be essentially a very slow leak over time, which completely throws off any potential fuel calculations you've done, and could be extraordinarily detrimental to your mission, as as well, we just ran out of liquid fuel right there and we'll soon be out of oxidizer in this tank. Then that's what happens to containers. As they damage, they not only will crumple, they will also leak. Now the next thing here is the engine and as you can see, it has taken some visible damage. We can actually see through parts of it as uh, well the modeling on it, how it handles it is a little bit weird as you probably noticed with the uh, container. We have holes everywhere, which isn't good. But on the engine, we also do have the same visible damage and what will happen to this is that it will overheat far more quickly. Now, for instance, this swivel engine, I personally, I don't think I've ever had one of these overheat on me. And with this being damaged 37.12%, 
oh yeah, it's gonna overheat. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment, but before we do, let us take a look at the command pod here, which actually, let's turn off the UI, get a little bit better of a look at things. You will notice it is also crumpled, oh god, UI back on, at 19.68%. Now at the moment, command pods don't actually have a mal effect. Now eventually, once it's taken too many hits, it will go kaboom. And uh, other than that, it will just deform up until that point is reached. But for right now, there isn't a mal effect. Now that is something that is planned. Command pods will have something bad happen to them as well. But I, I, I'm, honestly, I can't even think of what that might be. I don't know, perhaps you can't do a science report or something like that out of it. I have no idea. Or perhaps maybe the crew hatch couldn't open with it damaged. That's a possibility as well. But yes, that is what happens. It will take damage. And now one thing, I actually was very specific about the height that I had chosen for this uh, particular test as if your parts, engines, fuel tanks, or command pods take enough damage at once, they will still explode. So if you don't have a parachute on your lander, it's still just gonna crash into a big crater in the ground and go boom. But if say you have an engine on your lander, it slows you down enough, but not quite what you want it at, you'll just hit the ground slightly too fast and take some damage. So yes, uh, anything higher than this point right here, especially on the fuel tank that tended to explode things, which <laughs> isn't good. So uh, yes, you still do have that sort of uh, danger zone of speed and height that will still just completely annihilate your crafts. So let's go back to the uh, engine here, turn back on our UI, and let's take this thing off to show you how quickly it will overheat. So let's do that. Excellent, and just fly it straight up into the air. You can see the damage a little bit more better here with uh, all the crumpling that's gone on in the engine there. And as you can see, the heat warning just came on. It is heating up very quickly. We're not even at full throttle. And there it goes, it has exploded. And yeah, that is what will happen to any of your engines that are damaged. The more damaged it is, the more heat it will produce. And eventually, go kaboom. And of course, as a demonstration of the uh, <laughs> things will still explode if they fall from too high of a height, we'll just let this thing crash into the ground so you guys uh, can actually see that yes, uh, if you still drop something from high enough or fast enough, it's still going to crash as it normally would in the game. Because, uh, yeah, that, that isn't being changed by the Kerbal Crash system. This isn't some magic bullet to never let your things explode, which is a good thing. So, let's just wait for the last remaining few hundred meters and zoom out for a better view. Kaboom! There we go, beautiful. So, yes, from enough height or enough speed, you will still explode. Now, let's go back to the Space Center and take a look at another test that I've set up. This one to show you, once again, the issues of damage, but also, <laughs> assuming it goes right, how the damage can also... Mm -hmm, how to put this? How it can be a bit weird. <laughs> so let's grab the Ares 3A that I've just attached to some... Uh, stabilizers and we're gonna drop this thing so that it'll take some damage now let us throttle it all the way down and actually let's just put the engine on a different action group while we're at it and drop there we go now we should have a fair few bits of damage the command pod is of course damaged the tank back here has been damaged by 23.37% and you can see it is slowly leaking though at a slower rate to the other one earlier this one, surprisingly undamaged, good for it. And the engine, oh wow, also surprisingly undamaged. I was gonna show off the heat effect here again, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Like I said, the test might not have gone perfectly to plan, but what did go to plan is this wheel is damaged, and if we turn on our brakes, this, oh god, no, I wanna hit the ex ladder. The ladder is damaged. Now these are again parts, like with the decoupler and the, uh, oh god, what else did I point out over there that couldn't be damaged? The solar panels. So they don't have a damage percentage on them, but they still can deform. But here's the problem. They'll deform, 
but they still function perfectly normally. Now, a wheel will still break like a normal wheel would if you crash too hard, but a ladder, it's always gonna be a weird, wonky ladder. And if we uh, get Valentina here out on an EVA, you can see it's a very wonky looking ladder with just shredded metal everywhere, but it is of course still perfectly usable. And this can get very, very strange as I've had several small crashes while testing this where this ladder was so deformed that it literally spanned several meters of the aircraft from about here to over here, but it was still a functional ladder even though there was nothing even vaguely resembling a ladder in its place anymore. And that's because all of the parts crumple and deform even if they don't properly have the mal effects of the damage. And it can just be a bit strange. I mean, again, look at this wheel we got here. It is just messed up, but it is still a perfectly good wheel. It will function just like any other wheel until, of course, you get to its breaking point that naturally exists in the game. So you just have these odd, very, very odd sort of crumpling artifacts that'll stay around forever. For now. Now, now I should get to some of the planned features for the future. This is still sort of a uh, initial release of this particular mod, so it's still pretty early in development at the moment, and there are hopes that in the future, using the Kerbal inventory system and Kerbal attachment system, that you'll be able to repair your parts. And of course, they also want to do things like balancing the heating and the leaking, and add leaking effects, because right now you don't know if a tank is leaking unless you click Click on the tanks and go, oh no, that one's perfectly fine, zero damage. That one, on the other hand, is now bone dry because, well, it's been leaking for a bit. So they want to add leaking effects so that you know. Uh, improvement of the colliders and collisions. I, I really look forward to that because, again, wonky wheels and ladders are kind of my... Oh, weird, really weird bit of this mod at the moment. And yeah, that's, I think, really all there is to talk about with this mod. It's just amazing. I mean, we now have a mod that shows actual crumple damage on your craft and gives mal effects for that damage. Now, of course, it still does need work with like the modeling and texturing that gets done with the uh, crumpling because we do get, end up with a lot of these see-through bits and bobs, which are weird. And a few balances to the system still do need to be made. But this is an amazing addition to the game that honestly I wish was in vanilla. And perhaps it will be one day, but for now we have this lovely bit of work being made once again by Enzo Mirtens, if I'm saying that name right in the slightest. And yeah, if you would like to try out this mod for yourself, and I would definitely suggest that you do, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. And of course, I do hope that you have enjoyed this particular episode here today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.